Good morning, and welcome to First Church of Christ in Longmeadow in the United Church of Christ. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday before the start of the Lenten season, when Jesus is revealed on the mountaintop to his closest disciples. I am Pastor Marisa Brown Ludwig, and I'm delighted to welcome you to worship this morning, along with our soloists, Carrie Larson, our pianist, Daniel Rose, and our liturgist, who is also my husband, Peter Ludwig. And joining us today for his second Sunday with us is Reverend Dr. Greg Dawson, a member of our church and a longtime minister in the United Church of Christ. Craig and his wife, Rosemary, are both ministers with over 30 years of serving churches. Greg also serves as army chaplain with the Massachusetts Guard here in Springfield, and he's a painter and a poet. He will be guest preaching with us for two more Sundays in March, and I'm delighted to welcome him to our worship this morning. Together, we all welcome you from wherever you are and however you are seeing us, whether from live streaming on Facebook and YouTube or recorded later on LCTV, or maybe next week you will be here with us in person. We are an open and affirming community that celebrates the extravagant welcome of Jesus Christ. And that means that you are welcome here no matter your age, your abilities, your economic status, your gender expression, your sexual identity, your doubts or your questions. In the United Church of Christ, we say no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I wanna say a word about the altar flowers given today on Sunday, February 27th. They were given in loving memory of George and parents Mabel and Purcell Stan Sanford by Bev Gray. They are beautiful and we remind ourselves by their beauty of these people that Bev loves, and we hold them in prayer. And now, before we begin our worship, I wanna invite forward Anne Smith. The leadership team of First Church has launched a series of brief moments of reflection. They are called Spotlight Moments, and today Anne Smith will be speaking. So please come forward, Anne. We welcome you. Good morning, church family and visiting friends. I'm Ann Smith, and I'm the chair of the uh, Pastoral Search Committee. <clears throat> I'm going to try to give the Reader's Digest version uh, and answer some questions that have been uh, put forth to me in the last several weeks. Uh, one of the questions was, why can't we use our last profile, the one that we used that uh, that garnered us uh, Reverend Pam, who we just loved. And the reason is, we are not the same people. Uh, aside from COVID, Pam brought and shared gifts during her three years here, as did Marisa, and their gifts changed this church. And if we don't recognize that, then we're not recognizing our faith and our growth. <clears throat> The other question is that we've been asked is, what does uh, Maurice's departure mean uh, to the search committee? On a personal level, we felt all the same things that everybody else did. There was uh, heart wrenching and um, confusion and, and some other things. The flip side of that is, what did Reverend Maurice's departure mean to the uh, personnel, I mean, the, pastor supply a search team. Nothing. Because Marisa was very gracious in her timing, we had not come anywhere near uh, the time when we were even thinking or looking at candidates. And her gracious departure allows her to continue with her gifts here so that we can enjoy her and that the search team can go on and it eliminates uh, one step. I also need to have you, to say this to you, uh, that when you see Marisa or if you talk to her online, to please thank her. This was a huge unselfish gift that she, that she gave us. A lot of you don't understand the timeline of a search committee. The first thing that happens is a pastor leaves. Uh, Pam left in November, I believe, and then a search team chooses an interim. 
The interim works with the church, questions who they are, talks about the addresses the sadness of losing a pastor, works with the co-pastor, and continues with our faith life. Only until the interim pastor um, decides that we're ready to move forward, then and only then is a search team developed. We did not start meeting until November. Uh, of course, we went through Christmas and all of that and have been steady. We worked here yesterday. We've had two Saturday sessions in addition to meeting every Monday. We were here from 9 till 4 yesterday filling out the profile. It is pages and pages long. The only thing that they haven't asked us about is the flossing habits of our congregants. Otherwise, they ask everything. We don't fill out the profile alone. Uh, we are still waiting for some uh, paperwork from the committees. Um, it's a little bit difficult during the age of COVID, but we're getting there. So to all of you who are timeline people, we believe that our piece, our piece, the pastoral uh, search committee's piece, will be done the end of March. That doesn't mean the profile is done. There are statistical things uh, that we don't know the answers to that we need help with. And then it goes to review to UCC, and then they let us know if there are changes they'd like us to make. And then and only then is there an opportunity for uh, pastors to um, come and apply. Any more questions, you can uh, shoot us an email and uh, Please uh, know that we are working tirelessly uh, in this project, and we do have a timeline that is fed by God and God only. Thank you, Anne. Now, if you'll join me with our call to worship, come. Let us worship the living God whose glory is revealed throughout creation. We gather to worship the true God whose righteousness is revealed in the law and the commandments. Let us gather to worship the loving God whose mercy is revealed in Jesus Christ who died for us that we might live. We gather to worship our heavenly Father who has revealed himself through our risen Christ and restores us to his likeness through the Spirit. Come now, let us take a moment at home and within the church to turn and to pass the peace of Christ. Christ, peace be with you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace be with Now let us take a moment to enter into prayer. Our Heavenly Father, here in your house with your people come and abide with us that we might abide with you together as your people may christ be for us may christ be behind us may christ be to our right and to our left may christ be above us may christ be below us may christ be within us and we in christ this we ask amen Please will you rise in body and spirit, in person or at home, for our opening hymn. We have come at Christ's own bidding, and the words will be on your screen. And it's number 182 in the New Century Hymnal.
And I invite forth Peter Ludwig to read our first scripture from the Hebrew scriptures. Peter, thank you. Our first reading today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Here ends the first reading. Could somebody tell me what time is it? everything under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time for everything. So once again I ask you, what time is it? In our gospel lesson, Jesus is going about and teaching and healing. And the disciples are following along. And Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose and forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of, of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. And then he said something really strange. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. And then we go into, after eight days, after Jesus had said this, he then took Peter, John, and James, three of his disciples, with him and went up onto a mountain to pray, a practice that he would do on a regular basis. At times he would go alone and the disciples would have to seek him out, but in this case, he brings three of them, his disciples with him. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothing became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking to Jesus. They spoke about his departure, some translations, about his, his um, excuse me, um, exodus, which he was about to bring to the fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, <laughs> I think I would, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Moses and Elijah, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, 
for one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now the writer of this passage puts in the comment, they didn't know what they were asking for. But in reality, none of us do. But we can understand their motivation, can't we? We've all experienced those times when life is sweet, when things are going well. A moment of time of complete joy. And there wells within us the longing. If I could only hold on to this moment. If only I could put time in a bottle and gather all those friends and family that I love to this place and to this time that we might live here forever. It's an urge we all have experienced and yet we've all known could not last. And so we must return to regular life. In all things, there is a time. Now time is strange. In most cases, we experience time as the Bible describes as chronos time, chronological time, one moment after the another. But you and I know that we've experienced time in different ways. You've had those times when it feels like, boy, that week just flew by. Man, it's the weekend already. And then there's other times, maybe waiting in line for something, where it feels like time just drags on and won't move. That's chronological time, but at different paces. But the Bible also speaks about Kairos time. This is the time when it seems like everything stops. Now for mo most of us, the Kairos time we seek out are those special times. A wedding, a birth of a child, a graduation, retirement. Those are specific times when all of a sudden we step out of the hecticness and the ongoing rush of life. These are the times we seek out and long for and hope for and plan for. Even in our chronological time, we will plan for those times to step out of it and away from it. And yet then there are the Kairos times that just push themselves in. When we're rushing along down the highway, juggling all our balls and we get the phone call that someone we love is injured or dead. And all of a sudden the balls fall to the ground and we come to a stop and everyone else begin, continues rushing by us and we just stop. And nothing else matters. Nothing on the calendar. None of the great tasks that are before us. None of the great demands, there's only one thing that consumes us. And we are out of time. In our gospel lesson, the disciples are following Jesus one day after another, following a bunch of events that are on the surface amazing. Healing, casting out of demons, raising the dead, and yet on this moment, Jesus takes his three disciples up to a mountain and it says he is transfigured. His face begins to glow. It's not the first time the Bible speaks about that. And his clothes become as if like lightning. And appearing to him are two men, Moses and Elijah. And Peter waking up and seeing this is amazed. I'm always struck by the passage because it says that they are in glory. But what it doesn't describe is, are they like Jesus, emanating glory, or did they step into the glory? Like a person stepping out of the dark into the light of a fire. Moses and Elijah are revealed when they stepped into the glory coming from Jesus. And there they are speaking of his coming Exodus is approaching death, 
a future event that is quickly approaching. And Peter seeing Moses and Elijah, <laughs> their theological forefathers, the great ones, as they're about to leave, longs for everyone to stop right here, right now, for this moment, and to hold on to it. But as Moses and Elijah leave, a cloud appears, and God's voice speaks and says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. You and I run through life thinking that we are in control of it, thinking that we can simply plan the future and then walk into it. And then someone dies, and then an epidemic runs the scammit, and suddenly we are all in Kairos time. Stopped. Stuck. Unmoving, longing, longing to return to normal, afraid to utter the words that this might be from now on normal. Longing and wondering is God with us here? Does God see us here? Does God know what we are going through here? This has been a transition time for all of us around the world and in this country and in this church. You lost your pastor. You've lost your interim. You're about to lose your associate. But I need to remind you that whether you have a settled pastor or an interim or someone coming to supply the pulpit, we are all temporary shepherds. Call for a moment of time to a specific place to minister in God's name. In our gospel lesson, the disciples see Christ transformed. They long to stay in that place. And we recognize that feeling because that's our perspective of how life plays itself out and how we long for it to play itself out. But what we so often miss here is life from Christ's perspective. Life from God's What's interesting about this passage is that we see Moses and we see Elijah. It's not the first time they are mentioned. Because Jesus will use the Old Testament to speak of his coming, of what he had been sent for and what he would be fulfilled, that all within the prophets and Moses spoke of his coming. And tried to prepare the people for his coming. And how could they know? How could they see? How could they describe what he would be like? Throughout his ministry, Jesus seeks to provide, reveal to the people who he truly was. He would continuously say, I am the bread of life, the way, the truth, and light, the light of the world. Those words he uses, I am, in Greek is ego eme, I, I am. I, I am the bread of life. I, I am living water. He keeps trying to reveal the people who he truly is until finally, when the people are arguing, we don't need to listen to you, we have our father Abraham, Jesus said, before Abraham was, ego eme. Before Abraham was, I am. And the people picked up stones to kill him because they knew exactly what he was saying. 
when Moses said to a burning bush, Whom shall I say sent me? God said to them, Tell them, I am who I am, has sent you. We see time as a series of events, past, present, future. But God is beyond time. God is both at the beginning, at the middle, at the end, all at the same time. The reason Moses and Elijah could speak of the coming of Jesus was because the God whom Moses saw in glory, and the God Elijah heard speaking to him in a cave, was the same God who in the fullness of time poured out his glory into the human form and submitted himself even unto a cross. That they could speak of what the Messiah would be cut like because they had already been speaking to him in their present moment. Beloved of God, as you struggle to wonder what will be the future of this church, understand this, that the God who was with you is with you now and will be with you in the future because he is already there. And he has revealed himself to you in Jesus Christ who has poured his spirit into you so that the kingdom of God now resides within you. When he promised us eternal life, it wasn't life that began in heaven and then went on forever. It was life outside of time. And so when we place ourselves into Christ and we abide in him, we are not abiding in Kronos. We are abiding in God. And that is why Jesus was called in, your, in um, Revelations, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And as one person wrote, about Jesus, you are the journey and the journey's end. When we abide in him, we abide in the work that God has been doing throughout time to redeem the lost, to heal the broken, to call us home in him. And so what time is it? It's God's time. Whether it was in the past, whether it's in the present, or whether it's in the future, it's always God's time. And so I leave you with the words that he left, gave to his disciples when God said, this is my beloved son, Listen to him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, there are times when we are afraid. The future is unclear and we are afraid. All those who were with us and guided us, leave us and we are afraid. The world becomes more and more a dangerous place and we are afraid. We wonder, will normal ever return or have we now live, are living in a new normal that no one wants to live in? And we are afraid. So we ask, Lord, that you might reveal your glory to us that we may behold your face and we may be assured that you are with us, even here, even now, just as you have been and just as you will be, you are with us. And all we need to do is to seek you, to take up a cross and follow you. That our answer will not be found in a calendar, will not be found in programming will not be found in the next minister 
and is always and always will be found in Jesus Christ. May we abide in him throughout all eternity. In your name we pray. As we move forward from scripture and preaching and singing into spoken prayer, we gather in the power of community that is so different from during the week when we are apart. For in this hour, we are together, holding together the prayers of our hearts, those we can speak aloud and those we can't. So in this time of prayer, please go ahead. If you are online, please begin to put your prayers in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, the names of anyone or a world event or issue of our time that you'd like to raise up. But please use first names only because it is a public forum. Our God knows us each and what we need and who we are praying for. On LCTV, please go ahead and speak your prayers aloud and know that we hold them with you across time and space. And while you are entering your prayer requests, I will just open us in prayer to give you time. And Brooke will write them to me so that I can share them in this place and we can hold them together. <clears throat> oh Jesus on the mountain, may we see your true face. Wherever we are this week, as we approach the start of our Lenten reflection, can we see you revealed to us? Because surely you are in the faces of people who look like us and people who don't, people who speak our language and people who don't, people we recognize and new people, people who are invisible, the ones who are in our homes and the ones who are in our streets. And surely your face also is in the animals and the plants and the beauty of this creation that is so much more than humankind. Be revealed to us 
And may we be open to see the glory of who you truly are, even if it's just a glimpse in Kairos time. And may it stay ever fresh as we go forward. I want to lift up that during this month of February, our country and our community have been celebrating Black History Month, and we lift up especially our siblings of color, black and brown, whose history we have not fully told, whose courageous and creative lives we are increasingly lifting up and supporting with pride. Oh, may that grow with each passing day. May the storytelling bring all Americans in our beautiful diversity more and more into the history and future of our country. The shameful and the beautiful, the hurting and also the triumph, God's children, one country together. Oh God, this week has seen an act of war such as we have not seen in a long time. We pray for the people of Ukraine, their relatives, their loved ones who are here among us and there, for all who are running, for all who are hiding, all who are being called upon to act in a way that no one should ever have to act. For world leaders that they may act to bring an end to war, a just peace for all peoples, Ukrainian, Russian, and the surrounding countries who are so impacted by this terrible time. Surround that land, O oh God, with healing light and the way back to wholeness and a real lasting peace and freedom. And we know, O oh God, that there are other places in this world that are hurting also at the feet of violence as we speak. May your holy healing presence come through us to heal all these lands. And now let me lift up prayers that Brooke has sent from you. This morning, you have lifted up <coughs> prayers for Ron, who will undergo surgery tomorrow. Prayers for the Ukraine. Prayers for Danica. Prayers for First Church, First Church and its members in finding a new pastor. Surely, yes. Prayers for the world and those in war-torn areas. Prayers for peace. Prayers for the people of Afghanistan and Yemen and other victims of war. And I would add to that prayers for the people of India, where terrible genocidal acts are happening, especially against Muslim and Christian siblings. Prayers for the people of Ukraine. Prayers for Chris. Prayers for Candy. Prayers of deep gratitude for all those serving on committees that will bring a settled pastor. Prayers for Sharon and for Zelma. Prayers for those coming to the aid of Ukraine. Prayers for Scott and for healing. Your prayers keep coming, and so if I can catch them, I will lift them up as well. How powerful is that, that you are praying with us from wherever you are? I feel it, and I am moved. Prayers for Kaylee's mom. And now, whatever prayers have been lifted up, whatever prayers remain unsaid, for all who have been prayed for and for anyone who has no one to pray for them. May our God surround them and push through with power well beyond what any of us alone can do. Won't you say with me then, the prayer that Jesus gave us to say. In whatever words are most comfortable for you, it is the Lord's Prayer, so please speak it from where you are. Um, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And there's a, another prayer that has come through, and I will add it to our holding prayers for Corey, our church, 
and our sister church in East Long Meadow. And so now we come to the time of offering when we are invited to give out of a center of gratitude. Gratitude for the blessings in our lives, the goodness and the gifts that we have that with our sharing makes our world a better place. So from wherever you are joining us today, we invite you to come to this offering with open hearts and hands. If you are on live stream, then you will see how that you can digitally give. In the comments, it will show up for you on Facebook and YouTube. And on LCTV, please know that you can mail in a pledge or donation to our church office. So as we hold together all of the giving we will do this day, virtually and in person, we lift our hearts and our voices to God as we will sing together the doxology. So I invite you to rise in body or spirit, wherever you are, and Carrie and Daniel will lead us. Almighty God, surround all our gifts and let them go forth into the world, surpassing any time or place to meet the needs of all your children everywhere. And this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated if you are standing. Just have some announcements of the church family now. Um, so today there is no church school for grades K through 5 because we gather for family worship today at noon on Zoom. This we do on the fourth Sunday of most months. This is a worship designed for all ages, but centering on our littlest ones. And we look forward next month to returning to hybrid where we can be in person and also online for family worship. That will be in, starting in March. But today, join us for our last time together on Zoom at noon, family worship. Later today, there will be First Church Middle School Faith and Bible Study at 1 p.m. and Youth Group at 2 p.m., special times to let more families join us for family worship and also participate with Kaylee in the ministries for our older youth. So join our youth leader, Kaylee Lasher, for Faith and Bible Study at 1 and Youth Group at 2 on Zoom today. So the great news, the joyous news, is that next week, in-person worship will resume here at First Church Sunday, March 6th, we'll be back here in the sanctuary and also online on YouTube and Facebook. So please come if you desire. If you're ready to be with us back in person, we will still be honoring social distancing. We will uh, still be wearing masks. And it is a communion Sunday, so I invite you to bring communion elements with you. Some bread or cup, some bottle of water or juice that you can bless with us here with the people who will be online. Um, have your elements ready. We will sanctify them together and share them. Um, I will look forward to seeing you in more ways once again, starting next Sunday, March 6th. Uh, then church school will begin to return in person the weekend after that, which is March 13th. I want to let you know that Ash Wednesday is coming up this week on Wednesday, March 2nd, and March marks the start of Lent. The deacons are hosting a Zoom Ash Wednesday service that night, so Wednesday, March 2nd at 6 p.m. And we have put ashes out for pickup on, in the William Street lobby. And on the day of Ash Wednesday, they'll actually be on the steps. They are in baggies with a bulletin and prayer, and you can come and pick them up so that you can have some at home with you to join us on Zoom when we will uh, have a celebration of co contemplative, quiet prayer to mark Ash Wednesday and lift up scripture and open our hearts to prepare ourselves for this time of return and examination during Lent. Um, so that's Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, March 2nd at 6 o'clock p.m. on Zoom. 
And I'll be offering a Lenten book Bible study through Lent on Monday nights at 6.30 on Zoom starting on Monday, March 7th, using New Testament scholar Amy Jill Levine's new book, Witness at the Cross. It looks at Good Friday from the point of view of different people who were in the scripture stories and invites us to consider what we believe happened there at the cross before Easter Sunday. You can pick up a copy of the book in the church office or order one online. So join us Mondays in Lent at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom, Witness at the Cross, starting next Monday, a week from Monday, March 7th. So for more information about any of our programs, our classes and offerings, please contact the First Church office at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. I also want to just say a word of thanks for the inspired preaching and prayer today of Reverend Greg. Greg, we are so happy to have you with us and look forward to having you for two more weeks in March, March 13th and March 20th. And so I invite us now to rise in body or spirit wherever we are for our closing hymn, A Wondrous Sight, O Vision Fair. It's number 184 in the New Century Hymnal, and the words will be on your screen. Thank you, Carrie and Daniel. And we shall sing verses one through four. Now, beloved of God, go bravely into the future knowing that God is already there waiting for you. Go knowing that he has been with you in the past, he is with you now, and he is waiting for you in the future. For God is with us, for God has come to us, and God will lead us home. Go with God's peace. Amen.